If you're involved in the web development ecosystem, you've probably heard of this framework called Next.js. And in today's video, we're going to cover what exactly Next.js is, what features it offers, who is using Next.js, and why are they using it? Why are so many people gravitating towards Next.js and basically just forgetting about like create Re React app and just building only client side applications? So as per the Next.js docs, they say, Next.js is the React framework for the web, and it enables you to create full stack web applications by extending the latest React features and then also using the different kind of tooling here to allow for faster builds. So effectively, Next.js, it uses the React library and React, a lot of people would consider it as just a library in which it has a lot of cool different features and kind of a way to kind of think about structuring your applications. But React itself doesn't like enforce a structure of your applications, nor does it give you a lot of things out of the box. Whereas Next.js, it's going to be much more of a framework in which there's different structures that you need to abide by when creating a Next.js app. But while this can be restrictive to some extent, these kind of restrictions also allow you to enable and allow Next.js to kind of do some really cool things and to give you more kind of out of the box features and different benefits of using it. So what are some of those features? Well, Next.js docs here, they go over several different features here. So we're going to dive into a few of these and kind of explain them a little bit more. So first of all, if they have built-in optimizations here, they have automatic image, font, and script op optimization. So if we go look at this page, you can see that for their image optimizations, they have this image component here that you can import from next image. And it does a lot of cool different things in which it all automatically has size optimization in which you automatically serve the correct size, which if you've been doing web development for any time now, you know that one of the biggest things that can slow down your apps is if you're serving up these huge assets and these huge images. So this is a very nice out of the box feature. It can also help you prevent layout shift. So like I call this a janky page in which like you click on a page and like stuff sh starts shifting all over the place. This will help prevent that. Also faster page loads. So images are only loaded when they enter the viewport using native browser lazy loading with optional blur up placeholders. Not entirely sure what that means, but, uh, have a browser lazy loading, so only loading the image when it's in the viewport. I can definitely see that being of benefit. And then asset flexibility, so on-demand image resizing, even for images stored on remote servers. So pretty cool optimizations there with images. Similar stuff with fonts in which they allow you to kind of use next font and kind of do some different optimizations for your font sizes, as you probably know. It's easy to kind of mess up fonts and slow down your app because of it. And they definitely help prevent that here. And then also they can improve your scripts and provide some different optimizations for different scripts. Like you can see here, when you need to kind of embed a script into your HTML and stuff, they can kind of help you optimize that as well. So they have these various optimizations, which that alone is pretty cool, but that's just their first feature here. So they also have dynamic HTML streaming. So this allows you to deliver content faster than ever before. But this sounds cool and all, but what, what actually does it mean? Well, dynamic HTML streaming, if we go further into their docs here, I think a good place to kind of start here actually is skipping all this up top and just going to first, like what, what is streaming? Well, to understand how that works, it kind of goes into server-side rendering and its limitations. So for server-side rendering, there's kind of this five-step process. First, all data for a given page is fetched on the server. So you first need to make that request to the server to get all the data that you need to render out that page. And then the server will actually render the HTML for that page and then send it in step three back to the browser in which the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for the page are sent to the client. And then a non interactive user interface is shown using the generated HTML and CSS. So your content shows, but 
It's not actually interactive content at this point. That is step number four. And then number five, React finally hydrates the user interface and this makes it interactive. So here in this little diagram here, you can see that the first step is fetching data on the server, rendering the data on the server, and then loading co content on the client, and then hydrating it to make it interactive. And you can see this takes time to do all of these steps. And they are sequential and they are blocking. So as it says here, so all this is going to take time and you can't like do these in parallel and do them kind of all at once. So streaming, it allows you to break down the pages HTML into smaller chunks and progressively send those chunks from the server to the client. So with server side rendering, it might look like this in which you have no content on the browser. And then once the server renders that content and sends it to the browser, then you have your entire your entire page right here. But with streaming, what you can do is you could break your content down into these chunks, which in React, this is actually really helpful because in React, we already think in components. We already chunk our page into these reusable kind of functions or components. So what if there's a way to just stream your components to the page rather than rendering your entire page altogether? You could like send a component, the user could start interacting with that component and send the next component, so on and so forth. So with streaming, you can do just that in which in this diagram, you, you can see instead of sending everything like here to the page, you can have maybe three different components here, send the first one, send the second one, send the third one. And then you can show like partial loading state here. And this also leverages React Suspense to do this. So it enables parts of the page to be displayed sooner without waiting for all the data to load before any UI can be rendered. So, and this kind of goes into this works with React's component model really well. And you can see now in this diagram here, instead of kind of what we had before in which we were, we just had like this long, you know, we render it on the server, we make the request, render it on the server, send to the client, then hydrate it so it's interactive. You can see for these three different components, we can first kind of fetch the data and kind of do these things in parallel for our different components here. And we're going to reach a much faster kind of time to interactive here because we're just streaming each component rather than rendering the entire page and then sending that forward. So you can use HTML streaming to like what it says, deliver content faster to the user to improve your performance and especially your user perceived performance, which if they get content that they can interact with sooner, they're going to perceive that much faster. Even if like you're still kind of loading components there, they're like, Hey, I don't care. I can start doing my thing, you know? And then they also have rack server components. So I have an entire video on these, so I'm not going to go into depth on these, and you can check that video out for a more in-depth explanation there. But uh, yeah, you can render components on the server and then send them. This allows awesome things when it comes to kind of data fetching and different things like that when using server components. And that leads me right into data fetching in which you have different methods that can run on the server, server to allow you to render content in a bit different way. So if we go to this page here, there's a couple of things that I want to kind of highlight here in which here it says you can fetch data on the server. So you have direct access to the backend data sources, example, databases. You can keep your application more secure with having API keys and stuff like that on your server there and right where you're fetching data, which is helpful. And this plays right well with server components. You can reduce waterfalls. So this is like you make one request. And then once you get the data from that request, you make another request, get the data, make another request. And it's just like this waterfall of requests. So you're not doing anything in parallel there. You can kind of prevent that a little bit here. On that note, that's what I kind of want to jump to here is where you can kind of do more paralleled data fetching here in which you have your different route system here. So you can, instead of having this waterfall here in which it's like, okay, we first get the root layout. And then once we get the root layout, then we get the dashboard layout, and then we can render the settings page. 
you can do all those requests in parallel and then hydrate those like so. And that's going to just, like it kind of says here, with parallel data fetching, requests in a route are eager, eagerly initiated and will load data at the same time, reducing waterfalls and total time to load data. So much quicker applications here. And then also automatically dedupes your fetch request, which is really cool. So say you make like several of the same fetch requests. So you have request A, request A, request B, 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 C, C, C. Next.js will automatically dedupe this, which is automatically deduplicate them. So it won't send duplicate requests. It will just send, it will take all these requests here and it will end up just returning request A, B, and C. So just making three requests rather than hammering your server or API with several different of the same requests, it automatically deduplicates those requests. And then it also provides some cool out of the box features when it comes to caching data and stuff like that as well. So data fetching in Next.js is really cool. You also has various CSS support. So CSS modules, SAS, post CSS, CS and JS, all this can be supported in Next.js. I'm not going to get into that too much, but uh, just know that there is a lot of support there as well as for TypeScript and different things like that. And then you also have client and server rendering, which we've kind of touched on a little bit here already, but just to kind of dive in a touch deeper here, Next.js allows you to kind of decide where you want content to be rendered. So do you want it to be like dynamically rendered on the client? Do you want it to be rendered on the server at request time? Or do you want it to be rendered at build time. So when you first build your app, you can render all that content and then you can just serve it from a cache instead of needing to render on every single request. So you have these various different ways to kind of render content and it kind of gets into it a little bit here. So with static rendering, both server and client components can be pre-rendered on the server at build time. The result of this work is cached and reused on subsequent requests. And it can also be revalidated. So that is pretty cool to know. And then it kind of gets into the difference of server and client components, which I cover in my server components video. And then dynamic rendering, both server and client components are rendered on the server at request time. So instead of build time, it is at request time. When you make that request to your server, then it renders it and then fires it back to you. And then of course, you can also have client signed rendering in Next.js as well. And then also, you can have different Node.js and Edge runtimes. So if you're able to run code at the edge and use these serverless functions, which are, I believe, pretty new to Next.js, then you can run code on the edge. And if you have that code closer to your user, then that's going to allow it to send it to the user quicker. And if we go to this page here, you can actually see that when you run something on the edge, you can have very low latency and you can have high security, very high scalability, and there are different different benefits of, of doing so. So you can use these kind of different run times as well in Next.js, which is very cool. And then you have different route handlers. So Next.js, you actually have a way to do a built-in API to handle different API endpoints and make requests to these endpoints. And then you can have this API built into your next app and then communicate with a database and something like that as well. So in this example here, you can see you can have an API folder and then you can make requests to this API and to different routes that you create within your API here. And as an example of this, you can see within your API here, you can have your API connected to like a Mongo database here, and then you can post data to it and use that just like you would within any other API that you would use, but you can have this built in to your next app. So you can have everything in one place. You can still write JavaScript for this, which is great. So I think this is another really cool feature of Next.js with that built in API support. And then you also have powerful routing and layout. So if we go a little bit deeper into this feature here, Next.js has a cool kind of app router and they built this app router using server components, which now it supports shared layouts, nested routing, loading states, air handling, and a lot of other cool features. And just to kind of show you an example of how this looks. So within your kind of overall app right here, if you see the folder structure here in with this app folder, this is just going to be your root directory. So out of the box, you don't need to like NPM install 
React router and then create your different router and uh, kind of go through all that boilerplate within your app folder, that's automatically going to be your just kind of root URL here. And then if you create a folder within your app folder called dashboard, then you automatically have a path slash dashboard that is going to create a different route. And then within the dashboard folder, if you have a settings folder, well, that just created a nested route, which gives you your root dashboard forward slash settings. So you can have this built-in router here within Next.js as well, which is very cool. And it has different kind of file convention stuff for that as well. And then also has middleware support. So it allows you to run code before a request is completed. And this can be used for authentication, A-B testing, and different localization things. So very, very cool stuff within Next.js. Now, who is actually using this? Does anybody use it? Or is it just this guy in the internet that thinks this is pretty cool? Well, it's not just me. I do think it's pretty cool, but it definitely isn't just me. So if we go and scroll down here a little bit more, we can see different applications that use Next.js. So we can see meet thousands of beautiful websites built with Next.js by Vercel. And yes, you can deploy these on Vercel. I actually like deploying almost all my apps on Vercel. It's just super easy. So that's also a nice benefit here. I think it's created by the team at Vercel as well. But you can see uh, Netflix Jobs, TikTok, Twitch, Hulu, Notion, Target, HBO Max, Nike, AT&T, like a lot of different websites built here, at least part of their websites using Next.js. So you can see Audible here. So it's definitely a framework that is, you know, tested by these large applications and large companies and trusted by them. So I think that it's definitely a good framework to understand and as well as kind of job opportunities. If you know React, there's a lot of jobs out there. And then with all these companies using Next.js, I think it's also a great framework to invest time in learning. So future videos are going to cover more of this stuff in depth. I'm definitely going to have more different projects that I create with it and stuff like that. So make sure you subscribe for that. Thanks for tuning into this. I hope it gives you a good overview of Next.js and I'll see you in that next one.